Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane DC Direct Page Puncher John Constantine. Now these Page Punchers are not technically part of the McFarlane DC Multiverse line, but I consider them to be an offshoot of that. They're the same body style, articulation, and same scale. This is a way of McFarlane sort of bringing back DC Direct, making artist specific figures. This includes a comic and a figure. I believe the cover was done by Lee Bermejo. I think all the figures are based off his artwork. So let's go and check out the packaging. As you can see at the top, ages 12 plus, DC Direct, McFarlane Toys, includes an exclusive comic, DC, John Constantine. Here he is in the package. Looks like he comes with a book and then an alternate hand with a spell or energy effect, which is pretty cool. One side of the package, John Constantine with a Black Adam comic. Other side, page punchers at the bottom. Got a bunch of credits and there is a barcode, in case that helps anybody. And on the back side, here's Constantine and here's the comic. So with no further ado, let's open him up. And I did get two of these figures. One of which to open and use as is, and the other one for custom purposes. I'm a sucker for suited bodies. And it's not exactly a suited body, but it's pretty close. I figure I'll probably head-swap this guy and have a generic detective from my Gotham City Police Department. Here's the entire first wave of the McFarlane Page Punchers. Batman, Constantine, Superman, and Black Adam. I've seen some rumors of what's coming up next. Can't wait to actually see him in person, though. Seems to be a pretty cool line. Exclusive comic, some badass figures, two thumbs up. All right, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. He does come with one alternate hand, and it has a magic effect attached. He comes with a spell book, a display stand, a collector's card, and of course, the Black Adam comic. But before we take a look at those, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So this is John Constantine. He's a member of the DC Universe that specializes in magic. He's very powerful and is often a member of the Justice League Dark. Really pleased to get a figure of John Constantine, as I'm a sucker for suited figures. I got an extra one. Just for that purpose, I'm going to head swap him and probably make a random detective for my GCPD. So let's take a look at him. John Constantine, starting with the face here. Looks great. You can see a lot of detail above his mouth. A lot of lines and wrinkles there. Looks good. The hair looks fantastic. A little bit wild, a little bit unkept. A little bit spiked. It's not pure blonde, kind of dirty blonde. Got some dark colors at the bottom there. One eyebrow, a little bit sort of cocked up. His shirt is open, ties in disarray. That's a signature look of his. Now, this joint cut here doesn't look super good on this white shirt, but it's not that bad. He's got bicep cuts, double jointed elbows, nice trench coat outfit. This could make a great Commissioner Gordon custom. Gray slacks, double jointed knees. Now, one thing I don't like is this rip in his pants. Sure. It works for John Constantine, but it's going to make my head swap and random detective a little bit annoying. He's got brown dress shoes. Overall, this guy looks pretty good. You can see he can sort of move the jacket out of the way. Softer material. I like it. I like it a lot. Getting a figure like this gives me hope for Commissioner Gordon or an Alfred or something like that. And just a closer look at his face and head sculpt. I like what I'm seeing here quite a bit. And then, here's the figure broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removable parts detached. Both of his hands come off pretty easily, but he only has a swappable right hand. Now let's take a look at his accessories, and let's start with the boring stuff. Here's his display stand, typical McFarland stand, black perfect circle, it says DC on the bottom, it's got one peg for the pegles on his feet, very thin, very basic. Now there's one accessory that's noticeably missing, and that's a cigarette. John Constantine is always smoking cigarettes. But of course, if Warner Brothers won't even allow McFarland to include guns with their figures, there's no way they're going to have a cigarette with a mass retail toy. I totally get that. Now let's look at his collector's card. As you can see, it's a recreation of the cover of the McFarland edition of Black Adam number 1. John Constantine, you can see all four of the page punchers on the cover here. On the back side, there is a description. If you don't read that, go ahead and pause now. Now let's look at the comic. 
This is Black Adam number one, and this cover is exclusive to the McFarland toys. I'm going to have to go back and get a regular copy of Black Adam number one. I didn't realize Batman was in that issue. As you can see, Black Adam, the front, we've got Constantine, Superman, Batman, and of course, Black Adam himself. Open up the book on the inside. It says Black Adam McFarlane Special Edition. Pretty cool to have an exclusive cover just for the figures. Now let's take a look at his hands. He has two regular hands, and he also has this energy effect. I think that's a very cool accessory. It is permanently attached to an alternate hand, which I'm not super fond of, but does get the job done. Here's Constantine with his regular hands. Then, with his spell or energy effect hand, here's Constantine using the energy effect, putting up a shield or a barrier. And since I got two of these Constantine figures, one of which to do a head swap on, I have two of his right hands with the energy effects. Now, there are two right hands on both his hands right now, but it actually looks really good from this point of view, even though from the back it looks absolutely bad and ridiculous. Still, gets the job done, looks cool, and I'm very pleased. He also comes with this book. On the inside, it's totally blank. We can see the sort of binding in the middle. On the other side, blank on the back, and the front has a star, very similar to his energy effect. Here's Constantine holding and looking at his book. Now I'm mentioning the absence of a cigarette. Here are a bunch of cigarettes that I have. A couple of these might actually be joints. We have a lighter cigarette with a smoking effect attached. All kind of cool stuff here. This will definitely cure his need for nicotine. Here's Constantine holding a cigarette. He's also holding a lighter at the same time. His hand is like designed for a cigarette. He's got the two fingers together. Works out very nicely. The cigarette feels like maybe it's a little bit too small for this Constantine figure. And I drop this thing on the floor and boy was that a pain in the ass to find the carpet. Took me a good 20 minutes. Here's Constantine holding the cigarette that has the smoking effect attached while reading his book of spells. Very appropriate for this character. And just because, here's Constantine holding a joint. Definitely appropriate for this character. Now as you recall, I got two of these Constantine figures. One of them would make a great Commissioner Gordon custom, but that's not what I'm going to do with mine, as I have plenty of Commissioner Gordon figures. I was planning to make a random detective or GCPD officer, but I think I might make a private investigator from the DC world named Jason Bard, who's featured on and off in Batman comics over the last 50 or 60 years. Here's an image of Jason Bard from the comics. This body is going to be perfect for this guy. So I went into my human parts bin, a bucket I have full of heads, hands, legs, arms, etc. I'll pull out all these different various regular heads. They should all work for 7 scale, but none of them really shouted out Jason Bard to me. So then I checked out my NECA Aliens collection. I have a ton of custom marines from head swaps. This guy here is the head for Jason Bard that I want to use. And that's not a problem. He's just a generic marine. I can head swap him with any of those other heads. This guy has brown hair. A little bit wavy. It's going to be 7 inch scale. I believe he's a Hunger Games figure. Very happy to locate this guy easily. Went ahead and did the head swap. This is now my Jason Bard. Private Eye in Gotham City. Another Bat-related character to add to my collection. Funny thing is, I bought the old DC Direct Constantine 15 plus years ago, and that's who's been my villain for Jason Bard all these years. Give him a revolver, and bam, Jason Bard, Private Eye, Gotham City, a new Batman-related character for my universe. Two thumbs up. I'm almost more excited for him than Constantine. And I know the skin tones don't match, but I'm not doing anything else with this extra Constantine head. So I popped it on that Marine, and I think it works out pretty nice. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at the figure, his accessories, and a whole other character I made with the other Constantine, now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, he's standing about 7.0 inches tall, which can translate to just under 18 centimeters. Now let's check out his articulation. Starting with his head here. Of course, it can rotate from side to side. You can look up about that far, a little bit hindered from the back of the coat. Down that far, which is pretty good. Can't tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders, a ball joint, 
goes out 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. He doesn't seem to have that typical butterfly joint, but he has a jacket, which is covering up that gap. Bicep cut, double jointed elbows. His wrists can rotate, and it's going to be hinged as well. He's got this ball joint, his torso, and I kind of think it looks ugly. It really breaks up that white shirt. It's kind of hard to grip and to rotate that. Rotate around, forward and back. Same thing with the waist. Rotate around, forward and back. Pretty good range of motion, considering he's a suited figure. His legs completely does a split. It's not a ball joint, but a similar type concept. Rotation is non-existent. They go forward about that far. Back, not much. Double jointed knees. They go all the way back, but they're going to be obstructed by his coat. Then his ankle here, forward and back. Rotate, tilt, rock, and to articulation. Here's John Constantine, heavy on drink at the bar, a setting he is very familiar with. Here are all four of these page punchers. They're in the streets getting ready for the battle. And it's time. They all pull out their weapons and get ready to stop the forces of evil. And a closer look at John Constantine. He's getting fired up with a bunch of magic. Now let's check him out. Next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other John Constantine figures. Here's this new McFarlane Constantine. Which is actually technically, I guess, a DC Direct Constantine. Next to the oldest Constantine figure. This is by DC Direct. Back when Constantine was under the label of Vertigo Comics. This figure is cool for what it is. But it really sucks to today's standards. He doesn't look really all that good. I mean, it's not horrible. His articulation sucks. And frankly, the figure can't even stand up on his own, and that is ridiculous. It literally cannot stand up without help. Put the arms completely forward. Maybe if you're really careful, but my god. What a terrible job with the figure's feet. Still, I got much love for this figure. For many years, this is my fill-in for Jason Bard. Then, next to the Mattel... DC Universe Classics Signature Collection John Constantine. And here, next to a DC Direct New 52 John Constantine. Then, next to the DC Direct Constantine from CW's Arrowverse. Here are all of my John Constantine figures. I like him a lot, because he can easily double up as a private investigator or a random detective. He's the right type of attire. Looking forward to the Mezco one. Hopefully that guy comes out soon. And I'd mentioned earlier... I thought this body would make for a great McFarland DC Multiverse Commissioner Gordon custom. Find a different head with a mustache, some gray hair, find some glasses for him. Maybe give him a pipe or something. It would be a perfect Jim Gordon. I probably would have done something like that with my extra one. But I've got all the Jim Gordon figures out there. So I'm good on Jim Gordon. I was really happy to add Jason Barr to the collection. Now let's check him out. Next to some other McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here's what I did with the extra John Constantine. Made him Jason Bard, a private investigator in Gotham City. He's been in the comics for at least 40 years. Here's Constantine, next to the rest of the figures from Page Puncher Series 1, which I thought was complete, but then they went ahead and announced a black and white Black Adam. That guy's a Walmart exclusive. I have my pre-order, but I don't believe there have been any store settings yet. In addition to that, I saw the Page Punchers at both Walmart and Target today. Full set. Here are all the characters that are sort of on the Justice League Dark team that McFarland has made. At least these are characters I think of when I think of Justice League Dark. Dr. Fate, John Constantine, Etrigan the Demon, and a Swamp Thing. Dead Man is on one of the upcoming leaked lists. Give us Zatanna and a better version of Etrigan, and we're really starting to cook with something here. I would say these figures are pretty much my favorite versions. Dead Man, Dr. Fate, John Constantine, Etrigan, Swamp Thing, and Satana. Yeah, the scale's not perfect, but I really like all these versions of these characters. Can't wait to see McFarland's Dead Man, and hopefully we'll get a different demon and Satana down the road. Here's Constantine, next to the Black Adam wave from the upcoming film. Sabak is a character that's encountered Constantine over the years in the comics. He's heavily involved in magic and is a great opponent for Constantine. And here he is, next to the Blackest Knight, collected build as Trocidus Wave. And then, here he is next to the two most recent Mega Figures, at least before the Black Adam Wave has come out. And people are already starting to receive their Bane and Necron. Man, McFarlane's cranking these things out quick. 
Here he is, next to my most recent McFarlane DC Multiverse acquisition. This is the DC Classic Martian Manhunter. Got this guy at Target today. And now, next to the Target exclusive Crime Syndicate Collective Build Star of the Conqueror Wave. At least the three figures that are out so far. Then, next to all three versions of Lex Luthor in his power suit. And here he is, with both versions of the Future State Dark Detective. Here he is, next to the McFarlane Toy Store exclusive gold label variants of the Arkham Knight Red Hood and Scarecrow. Then, next to the Tales of the Dark Multiverse, Duke Thomas, and the Batman Laughs dressed as Batman. Here's Constantine, next to the Batman vs. Hush 2-pack. And here, next to the single release of Hush. Then, next to Ghostmaker. And here he is, next to the McFarlane Toy Store exclusive, gold label variants of the unmasked Xeranar Batman and the unmasked Infinite Frontier Robin. Then, next to the John Kent as Superboy, and the Tim Drake Red Robin. And now, next to Grifter and the Arkham Knight, here's Constantine, next to CW's TV series Slash, and the comic version of Godspeed. And finally, next to Injustice 2's Green Arrow and Reverse Flash. Now let's check him out, next to some action figures from different various companies, to see how he fits in both scale and style-wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with. Since he's a McFarland figure, they're typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the large action figure lines I collect, and work way smaller. But first, let's check him out with some of his McFarland Toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from McFarland Toys, all 7 inch scale. Then, next is more McFarland Toys. These are from different various video game properties. And now, with some Jack specific wrestling figures. And here he is, next to some DST or Diamond Select Toys. Then, next is some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here he is, standing next to some NECA figures. Then, next to some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, next to some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers. And here he is, next to some Mezco 112 collective figures. Then, next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here, with some Mafex figures. Then, with some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here he is, next to some SH Figure Arts action figures. And finally, Next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. Overall, this is a fantastic figure. His accessories are great. His articulation is good. One thing I don't really like is that cut in his waist. I also don't like the rip in his pants. It's appropriate for him, but I don't like it on my Jason Bard. The sculpt and paint job are excellent. No issues there. If I were to rate this guy, I'm going to give him a solid 8.5 out of 10. Really enjoyed this guy. Really like suited figures. Really like the custom I made from this guy. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.